Thanks for joining me, this is Danny, and welcome back to my Real Tech series. Today we are going to be playing with Pressure. This is going to be the first in a multi-parts mini-series within the series, in which we are going to be playing with the Pneumaticraft mod. Pneumaticraft is a unique tech mod that's based on pneumatics, which is to say that it is based on air pressure, and using air pressure to power machines and tools. It's got everything from mob spawning tools and guns to inventory logistics and hydraulic elevators. We also have the amazing pneumatic Iron Man armor, and of course the programmable drones. And we'll take a look at all these things and more. To get started with this mod, um, the first thing we're gonna need is some TNT and some iron and a flint and steel. Now there is a book that comes with this mod now. It is called the PNC colon R manual. And this is actually the patchouli mod, um, which is a mod that a few different mods use in or for documentation. So you do have to have that mod installed in order to get this book. And it's actually relatively easy to craft. It's just a book and some compressed iron. Now what we're about to make is some compressed iron. I had actually made some of this earlier. Some of you may have seen me make this. There are two different ways to make compressed iron. One is through a pressure chamber. We don't have a, pr pr a pressure chamber yet. And in order to make one, we are going to need compressed iron. Um, so there's an alternative way, which is explosion crafting. Um, so what we're going to do is we are going to set off an explosion. Actually, it doesn't really matter where we do this because I believe that it's going to prevent the explosion from breaking blocks. So if we throw some iron down on the ground and we light that TNT. <laughs> hooray! It's going to turn that iron into compressed iron. However, there is a loss. Now, um, actually, let me just throw this on the ground so that we see how much we ended up with here. So we got 51. Once we make our pressure chamber, of course, we will no longer be losing ingots. So that's one of the first things we're going to do is to make the pressure chamber and then to make the supporting infrastructure that we're going to need in order to add pressure to that pressure chamber. So in order to get started with our pressure network, these are this bottom row are the things that we're going to need. Um, well, not that, <laughs> these things. So we're going to need some pressure tubes. These are basically tubes that transfer pressure from one place to another or hold pressure within the network. We need an air compressor. This is something that's going to produce pressure. And we're also going to j create a pressure chamber using these this pressure chamber wall and a valve, a couple of interfaces, and some pressure chamber glass. Um, and then I'm also going to be using a pressure gauge tube module in order to see how much pressure is in our system. It's going to allow us to turn on and off our air compressor. Um, so this, this will all make sense <laughs> very shortly. So starters, we have our air compressor. This is what is going to produce pressure for us. So this is how we're going to add pressure to our network. Um, this is the most basic air compressor that we can make. It is a just air compressor. <laughs> if we look in JEI under compressors, we will see that there are a number of different compressors that we can make. Um, so this air compressor is just, it's the first tier compressor that will allow us to produce air pressure using some kind of fuel. So some kind of a furnace fuel. So we're gonna need some charcoal, some coal in there or anything that we can burn in a, in a furnace. We should be able to put <laughs> Pam's Harvestcraft pressed wax and you can see that it is generating air right now and actually that air is just being released through the back of this machine um, because it has because it is an open network so when we create a pressure network we need to make sure that this pressure network is closed um, so we're gonna for now I'm actually just gonna put a loop in the line here and that will close the pressure network so that as it's producing air it will be adding pressure to this network um, so the way pressure works is pressure is measured in bar. In this mod, um, the bar represents the pressure relative to the normal air pressure that's just in the air. Um, the normal air pressure in the air would be registered as zero. Um, when we go one air pressure, I guess, above that, or one atmospheric pressure above that, then we get one bar. We have a gauge here that shows us how much pressure we have. And certain operations, certain machines and tools will require a certain amount of pressure. And then they will release a small amount of pressure usually as they're being used. Um, so as we put more, pop, more fuel in here, and we will see that this little pressure gauge will go up. Um, now, 
All of our machines and our tubes and everything else will have some sort of a limit as to the highest pressure that they can withstand um, before exploding. Now there are there can be explosions in this mod if you're not careful about how much pressure you produce. So um, for the most part there are two tiers of machines. There's the first tier which allows up to five bar of pressure any more than that and we risk explosions. It doesn't necessarily mean that when we hit five the machine is going to explode um, or the pipes. The pipes can also explode as you can see in the one probe when we hover over it it says max pressure five. This one also says max pressure five. Um, it, but if we go above five there's a chance that at some point it will explode and the higher above five we go the greater the chance. Um, and once something in the network explodes, then air pressure is going to end up being released. So for instance, if this pipe blows up, then this network will no longer be closed and it'll start releasing air pressure. So we're going to want to set up some sort of a failsafe so that pressure does not exceed a certain point. And there are two things that we can do for that. The first thing we can do is we can use a safety tube mo module. So these there are multiple modules that we can add to these tubes that have different functionality. Um, the safety tube module, actually let me put this on the side, is going to open up um, and release pressure if it reaches a certain threshold. So by default when we first place it we can see in the one probe that the um, threshold is 7.5 bar. Now that is too high. Uh, we want it to be lower than that because by the time we reach 7.5 bar um, things will already have exploded most, most likely. Um, so we want to get that down to 5 bar for this particular network. In fact, yeah, if actually 5 bar should be fine. So um, what we do is there's a formula, um, a redstone formula. So I actually have a potentiometer which allows us to output a specific redstone signal. Um, I'm going to face it this way. And we will see that if we increase, or if we give it a redstone signal of 1, and then we look at it again, we will see that it's now 7 bar. Um, so every bit of or every power of redstone that we give it is going to increase it by a half a bar. So if we want to get it up, or if we want to get it down, or I'm sorry, decrease it by a half a bar. Um, so if we want to get it down to five bar, um, we need to give it a redstone signal of five. And now if we look, we will see that the applied redstone is five and the threshold is five bar. So that means that if we get more than five bar, it's going to open up that pressure valve and start releasing air <laughs> from the system. Now of course that's not ideal um, because that means that we're going to be wasting air pressure. Um, so if our air compressor is running and we've got a bunch of fuel in there and it just keeps running and running and running, we're going to be wasting that fuel because it's just going to be releasing it when it reaches that far. So I'm not going to do that. Um, it's just going to finish burning the one that I gave it, <clears throat> which is going to add a little bit more pressure. So what we really want to do is we want to be able to turn this thing off when uh, our pressure gets to a certain point. Um, so for that, we're going to use this pressure gauge tube module. Um, and what that's going to do is it's going to output a redstone signal based on how much pressure is in the system. So if we put a redstone signal that, or a redstone dust there, we will see that it's currently outputting a redstone signal of power 3. Um, it currently has a pressure of 1.95 bar. Now there is a calculation that if we look in the book, and we check out this pressure gauge tube module in the book, we will see that this tube module shows the pressure currently in the tube. In fact, actually, we can look at it, and we can see that, oh yeah, we have almost two bar in this tube right now. But it also emits a directional redstone signal, meaning it's re emitting a redstone in this direction. It's not going to be emitting it over here. <clears throat> of which the strength equals the following. So the strength of the redstone signal is equal to two times the pressure. So right now the pressure is almost two bar, um, so it's going to be outputting a redstone signal of three. Once it reaches two bar, it's then going to be outputting a redstone signal of four. When it reaches four bar, it's going to be outputting a redstone signal of eight. When it reaches four and a half, it'll be outputting nine. That's when we want to stop our air compressor um, because we want to give it a little bit of time to finish burning. We don't want to wait until it gets to five um, because that would be taking a risk. Now, for now, I'm going to clean this up later with some, some automated redstone stuff. But for now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run redstone so that by the time it gets here, it will be 
eight less than what it is here. Okay, so I've got nine redstone leading into this air compressor. So that way, when this guy is outputting a redstone signal of nine, which means that it has four and a half bar, we're going to end up at nine here, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So at that point, this guy will get a redstone signal. And we can tell it um, its redstone behavior is, by default, always on. We can say that we only want it on when we have a low signal. So as soon as we get a signal, it'll turn on. If we put a lever on this network, we can kind of demonstrate what will happen when a redstone signal reaches this thing. So if we put a piece of fuel in here, and then we give it a redstone signal, so now this redstone signal is 7, um, it's going to finish burning its fuel. But if we put another piece in there, we will see that as soon as it's finished burning that one, it'll stop. So that's one of the reasons that we want it to stop at 4.5, um, because it's going to continue burning its fuel until um, it's done. And we don't and and we don't want it to stop at five because then it'll continue burning that piece of fuel and generating more pressure. Um, so now let's do something useful with this pressure. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to build a pressure chamber. Um, a pressure chamber is basically a multi-block structure that that essentially holds a bunch of pressure. So it's kind of an air storage um, bit, and so it adds more capacity to our entire network. Um, but it also allows us to do some crafting as well. <clears throat> so I'm actually going to place this thing one block off the ground, and we're going to see why in a bit. Um, you can make the air compress or the compression chamber. Um, it has to be a square surface. It can be a three by three. It can be a four by four, and it can be a five by five. In fact, of course, if we look in the manual, we will see all the details. So we'll find that under manufacturing and pressure chambers, and it's going to tell us all the blocks that we can use in order to make a pressure chamber. And there are a couple of blocks that we will need to use. Um, and then here's a couple of different examples of how we can put these together. So. The pressure chamber needs to have at least one valve. Um, the valve is where we're going to input the pressure into the chamber. So we're using our pressure tubes. So here's our pressure chamber valve. Um, and then it's also going to need two interfaces in order to input and output. Now, technically, it doesn't really need those interfaces because you can also just throw items inside of it manually. So you can break a block, throw the items in there, and then wait till they are uh, crafted into whatever it is that you want. And then you can break a block again um, to pull those items out. However, um, you're going to lose pressure when you do that. Every time you break it, it's going to release a bunch of air, and we don't really want that. So that's why we're going to use the interfaces, which allow us to basically use hoppers in order to open and close. Um, actually, I'm going to put I'm going to put a piece of glass here too. We can so we can use um, pressure chamber walls or pressure chamber glass um, for the sides and the corners. Um, so I'm going to put that there so that we can kind of see what's going on in there. And then the, um, let's see, I'll put the pressure chamber valve here. Oh, wait. You know what? I'm going to put the pressure chamber valve in the back. So we're actually going to dig into that wall. <laughs> we can facade these, these tubes too, so we'll be able to hide them if we put them inside the walls. And then I'm going to have a one of the interfaces here on this side. Now the interfaces do face in a particular direction. So there, there's an input side and there's an output side. Um, we want to be able to input here um, and then it's going to output in, into the inside of the presser, pressure chamber. And then this one I'm going to place um, I'm actually going to have to get up to place this one the way I want it think. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that totally didn't work. I'm just going to place a block down there. And then I'm going to set that like that. So then the input is inside the pressure chamber and the output is on the outside of the pressure chamber. And that means that it'll pull stuff out and put it down there. One thing I didn't mention is that normally with this book, you can't see everything from the beginning. You see just a couple of basic things like the getting started and the basic materials. And then as you gain achievements 
with the mod. So if we look, we can actually get to our advancements here. Um, it'll open up new pages in the book. Now in this particular pack that I'm playing, the real tech pack, um, the book is open from the beginning. Um, but you will see these little symbols on things that you haven't finished reading yet. Now what we're going to do is we're going to hook this up to the rest of our network. Now keep in mind, when you're hooking new machines into an existing network, always make sure you start to be... Oh, that's turned the wrong way, isn't it? Always make sure you start the tubing um, on the other end. Uh, you don't want to start your tubing here because if I place a tube right there, it's going to open up this network and it's going to release a bunch of pressure, a bunch of air pressure. Um, all right, which, how do I get this thing to face? There we go. Yay! Okay, now it is a multi block pressure chamber. Hooray! And you can see that it currently has no pressure in it. Um, the pressure can actually go down to minus one. There is a way that we can turn this into a vacuum chamber. And then there are also upgrades that we can add to it. Um, with all the machines, including this one, um, there's going to be multiple tabs with information. This, this mod is really well documented. So besides the manual that it gives you, which has a lot of really great useful and detailed information. Um, every machine also has information. Um, and also, it has information in JEI. So when you're looking at items in JEI, you can hold down, usually, um, you can hold down the shift key and you can get a bunch of information about it. So now that's connecting to that. Now as soon as we connect this, um, some pressure from this network or some of the air from this network is going to end up going into this thing. So you can see that the pressure is going up in here, the pressure is going down over here. And it's it actually does it in a fairly realistic way. And we can see some particles in there showing that there's air that's going into that machine right now. So we have a little bit of pressure in here. So let's say we want to add some items. What we're going to have to do is, now we can't manually put items in um, these interfaces. So we will need a hopper or some kind of pipe or something. Um, and then we can say, let's say we want to make eight compressed iron. If we put it in there, we will see that a little door will open on the side. <laughs> and it will drop the iron in there. Um, actually, let's just do the one. <clears throat> um, and then what will happen is another door will open on the bottom and it will pop the iron or the compressed iron out here. Now we're going to want a hopper on the bottom here in order to pull that out or something to pull it out. What's going to happen is every time that door opens, it's going to lose about a thousand milliliters of air. The way the pressure is calculated is that every block in the network holds a certain amount of air. And if it's the pressure is going to be based on how much air it has relative to how much it can hold. So if we look at the pressure in the air compressor, we can see that it has a volume of 5,000 milliliters. So there's space in this, inside this air compressor for 5,000 milliliters of pressure, of air. Um, however, it is currently has 22,000 milliliters, which means that it has over four times as much air in it that it can actually hold or that it actually has space for and that's what causes pressure to build up so when we have 10,000 milliliters of air inside this thing um, that will bring us up to one bar and then every 5,000 milliliters above that will bring us up another bar the more capacity the network has for air the more that it can store and the less the pressure will change the first tool we're going to play with is the camouflage applicator. This is going to allow us to basically camouflage blocks um, such as these. Any blocks that can be camouflaged in the Nomadicraft mod um, with other blocks in order to basically facade them so that we can't see them. So most of the Nomadicraft tools do require air pressure within them. So it's kind of like a, they're like pressure tools or whatever. And in order to fill a tool with air pressure we do need a charging station and we can put the tool in the charging station and it'll charge it up basically with air pressure so it's taking air out of our existing network of air and it's putting it into this tool this is a slow process but it can be sped up with upgrades as like with all the machines we can see the upgrades that it allows over here and um, we can add capacity to it we can also add the security um, which adds in the, the safety valve um, we can also add up to 10 speed upgrades, which will make this process much, much faster. This guy can hold up to 10 bar, I believe. 
Um, however, our existing network will only ever have as much as five bars, so it won't be able to charge the tool any more than that um, until we upgrade our network. And then we also have a dispense upgrade, which adds a charge pad onto the top of the station, which means that we could then stand on it and it will charge all of the tools in our inventory. Um, this is probably enough pressure for now. Um, so then what we do is we right click on or shift right click on the block that we want to place there. And um, that's the spruce. <laughs> and then when we click on it, it sticks it there. And as you can see, it is taking it from our inventory. So if we click again, oh, wait, we have to clear it. Okay, so we shift click on the air, and then if we click again, it'll remove that block, and then we do get it back. We can also just break the block and it'll remove it that way. Um, but that will nicely hide our pipes if we want to have them running inside the walls so that we don't have to have everything sticking out <laughs> like this. Pneumaticraft also has its own wrench, the pneumatic wrench. Um, this guy does also require some air pressure, so it's kind of like a torque wrench <laughs> um, that takes pressure. Um, it can be used to rotate blocks. It can also be used to open up sides of a pressure tube. And you can also shift right click on different machines to drop them instantly. Um, as you can see, our compressor is running once again because our pressure did drop below a certain threshold. Um, it's reached it again, <laughs> so it's probably it's going to stop when it's done with this current piece of fuel. Um, so we've got a little bit of stuff there. So it works a lot like um, other wrenches you've probably seen. So if we shift right click there, it will drop the air compressor. Um, it does maintain its air storage. So there is still 23,000 milliliters of air stored in the compressor. Um, it did drop its wax, <laughs> which we can then pick up and put back in there. So now I want to just take a look at a few fun items that this mod provides for us before we move on to kind of the next phase of progression. So here we have an upside down hopper. <laughs> this is actually the omnidirectional hopper from Pneumaticraft Repressurized. It is similar to a vanilla hopper in functionality, except it does way, way more. Um, first of all, as you can see, we can change it to input from any side, not just the top. So and we can right click it to turn it. Um, by the way, when we use the wrench, we do use a small amount of air. Um, and then we can shift right click it to change the output. And we have upgrades that we can add to it. So once again, we can look in here. Um, we can add speed upgrades to make it act way faster than a vanilla hopper. This thing will be, if you max up the up, max out the upgrades, it's almost instantaneously tra transferring stacks of items. It's very fast. Um, we can also add a dispenser upgrade, which will basically have it spit items out into the world more efficiently than a vanilla dispenser. Plus, we can filter it as well. By changing the mode over here, we can say leave one item per slot, and that will basically cause it to filter. So if we say do something like this, or maybe we only want to let you know particular types of items through, um, then we'll basically have ourselves a filtered, a filtered hopper. So next, I want to play with the spawner agitator. This, if we sneak, well, when placed on, a, on mob spawners, the spawner agitator will prevent the spawn entity to despawn. When the player leaves the area, additionally, the spawner will keep spawning while the player is not in the area. So this is going to be really great from mob farm. So if you were with me several episodes ago, I did set up a vanilla sort of-ish mob spawner with vanilla and mob spawning utilities because we happen to have a spider spawner in here. Um, however, of course, the spider spawner only works when we're around because that's how vanilla spawners work. However, if we right click on it with that, um, it will then always spawn the spiders even when we're not here. Um, so we will now have a decent mob farm. <laughs> Hooray! By the way, if you ever want to remove a spawner agitator once you add it, um, you can do it with a logistics configurator. Um, we will be playing with this a lot in the future. Or uh, you can also just make another spawner agitator and right click on it with that in your hand and it will remove the, the existing one. Another nice feature of this manual is that you can sneak and right click on something and it'll take you right to the page corresponding to that thing that you clicked on. So we're looking at the pressure gauge module or if we want to look at the pressure tubes, we can learn about those here or the air compressor or the pressure chamber. 
All right, I'm gonna play with some fun stuff now. <laughs> so what I have in my hand is the Vortex Cannon, <laughs> which is, shoots a blast of air out at mobs and throws them back. Um, well, it's maybe a little bit, actually, what's cool about it is it looks, it's huge. <laughs> what I really want to play with right now is this minigun. So the minigun, minigun is a little gun that shoots ammo. Um, there are multiple different types of ammo um, that you can make and use. I've actually crafted four of them. Now, to use the ammo, the first thing we need to do is to, um, actually, let's throw that guy back. Oh, oh there's stuff in the way. So what we need to do is shift right click, um, we open up the ammo slots. Now I made four different types of ammo, this is just a small uh, demonstration of the different things that we can use. Um, this is just the regular ammo that we have right here. You hold right click, it takes a little while to charge up, and then it just starts shooting. Um, this ammo does very little damage, but it does it fairly quickly. Um, <laughs> there we go. So you can see we used 962 out of 1,000 ammo there. Um, now what it's going to do is it's going to go from top left and then next, next, next. Now if we shift, no, no. If we shift right click, no. Wait, how did that go? Middle click? Yeah, if we middle click, it'll then select that slot to always use. Um, this is the weighted ammo that we're using right now. It's a little bit more expensive, um, but it does quite a bit more damage. So you can see... <laughs> Once it starts shooting, it shoots fast, but it does take a while to charge up. Now, there are upgrades that we can do. Oh, I'm really cold. There are upgrades we can do to um, make it happen faster. The other kind that I want to take a look at is the explosive minigun uh, ammo. Um, this is basically going to cause an explosion at the site of, of the mob. Now, it does. it's not... Oh, no, there's a creeper. It is not... It's not an explosion that will break blocks, though. Oh no, it's raining. Oh, where'd you go? Okay. <laughs> so, it's basically an explosion at the side of the mob. Um, it doesn't really do a whole lot of damage though, does it? So let's, uh, let's switch to something else here. And then finally we have um, a potion. Now we can make minigun ammo from just about any- Oops. Just about any potion. Where did that go? Oh, here it is. So here I made one with poison two. So, oops. So when we shoot this guy, there's a chance. Now it isn't always going to get them with the poison, but it looks like it did. So he's got poison two right now. One thing I forgot about with the pressure chamber is that it's actually much more efficient to compress blocks of iron as opposed to items of iron into, and that'll give you, of course, compressed blocks of iron um, because that way the door doesn't have to open as frequently and of course you can comp you can recraft the compressed iron blocks into compressed iron um, how's this guy doing okay that's about as much as we're gonna get out of that so just another thing that we can do with this is to clean up <laughs> this kind of stuff so if we have a bunch of grass which a lot of times we do with because of the pollution of the realms mud a lot of times ends up spawning grass all over the place we can get rid of a bunch of it. oh and we can also throw ourselves as you just saw <laughs> so to upgrade items we can put them in the charging station so our minigun does have some upgrades that we can do once we put it in here we'll get this little manage upgrades thing when we click on that um, we'll see all the upgrade slots so i'm going to throw a couple of speed upgrades in there um, and we can look over here to see all the different upgrades so we have a dispenser upgrade which increases the increases the chance of the ammo effects so like potions freezing etc but it'll tell you how many can be added um, we can we also have an entity tracker upgrade zoom the player view when the mini game is active or when the mini gun is activated this has no extra air cost life upgrade uh, will slowly replenish any ammo in the mini guns magazine oh that is a really nice upgrade we may want that one let's see how this works now it's very dark tonight though okay so yeah look at that oh my gosh we did 19 damage like right away Yeah, nice. Charges up way faster. Oh, oh, baby zombie. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, I like this. I like this a lot. I'm going to add a couple of volume upgrades to our air compressor just to show you how that works. The volume of our air pressure or of our air compressor is 5,000 milliliters, 
So when it's at 4.7 bar, it's actually holding 28.7 milliliters. If we add this upgrade oops, to it, actually if we add one of them, we will see two things are going to happen. Our volume is going to go up. Our current air will stay the same, um, but our pressure is actually going to go down because we're increasing its capacity. So our pressure went way down, and now we kicked in again um, because we lost our redstone signal because our pressure throughout the network actually dropped a little bit. Um, it dropped over here first, and then that pressure dropped kind of the air from this part of the network kind of moved into this area, which caused the pressure to drop here. Um, and now if I add this other one, so that brought us up to 10,000 milliliters. If we add another one, that'll bring us up to 15, which will bring us down even further. And actually what's also happening now is that our minigun, which is in this charging station, is also losing pressure um, because the network that it's connected to has less pressure than it has. So everything always tries to equal equalize itself out. Um, but once the pressure comes back up in the network, then our minigun will also come back up with the rest of the network. I got a couple speed upgrades for our charging station. So we can see it, charge, it charges pretty slow. <laughs> We're at 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6. If we go into, or if we add the speed upgrades, it's going to go way faster. <laughs> Look at that. Of course, it's also pulling air out of our network more quickly, but that's totally fine. Um, so next time we are going to work on upgrading this network. Right, I think I got this. No, oh my god. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> I'll take a little fall damage there, but you know what? In the future we will be able to uh, fix that. Oh my gosh, that is awesome. I wonder if I can get like up on top of that. Oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> all right, I'm determined now. I'm determined to do this. There we go, yay, <laughs> that's cool. All right, let's see if we can do some build building hopping here. Yay, <laughs> nice. Oh, 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 I think I was too late. So we will be upgrading this network in order to be able to fill up our minigun more and use it for longer and our other tools and it'll allow us to do lots of other more advanced fun stuff with this mod. Um, however, in order to get that we are going to have to set up some more infrastructure including um, some cute little assembly machines that are going to be assembling some items for us. Um, but today we took a look at getting started with this mod. We looked at the pressure network and kind of the basics of that. Um, we looked at the pressure chamber. Um, we also checked out some fun early game stuff. So next time we're going to get into tier 2 pressure, or also known as advanced pressure, uh, pipes and compressors and other things. And we will also take a look at temperature management, because as we get into the more advanced stuff, we're going to be dealing with some heat um, that will reduce the efficiency of our machines. And we're also going to be using heat to our advantage in order to process oil and to refine oil and we're also going to be playing with some plastics that are going to be required for some other fun stuff that we're going to be making and then we're going to play with some more um <laughs> some more fun toys some some more advanced fun stuff including an elevator we're going to build an elevator in this corner it's a pneumatic elevator that works with pneumatics it's actually pretty cool um and and then after that, probably the following episode, we're going to start playing with logistics networks and the various drones. Now there's actually three different types of drones. There's lo the logistics drones that allow us to move items around um, based on certain rules. Um, there are also um, farming drones that will harvest plants for us. And there are programmable drones, which we can do just about anything that you could possibly imagine with. And those are really powerful, really fun, and <laughs> yeah, we're going to definitely have fun and do some interesting things with those. And then finally, probably, I'm thinking this is going to be the fourth and probably final episode of this little kind of mini-series within the series, and that is going to be playing with pneumatic armor, which is going to be an entire episode within itself because it is very 
there's just so much there. There's so much that you can do with the pneumatic armor, and it's crazy fun and amazing, and we are going to have so much fun with that. So I hope you join me for that. If you do have any questions or comments or whatever about Pneumaticraft, about what we've, what we've done today or anything else, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And if you did enjoy this, don't forget to click the like button and to join me next time. Thanks for watching. Bye. -bye.